everybody for the second time today. I did figure out since the last video I made that it is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Hope everyone had as wonderful of a day as me. I did two loads of laundry. That was about it. Okay, so a couple things. First thing, I'm very upset. <laughs> I'm very upset because I feel very censored by this platform. Like every time I try to talk about anything that goes against these YouTube standards and guidelines or whatever, they like suppress my videos so that they don't get views. They take away my like monetization, whatever. I've already had this stupid copyright strike. Like I just feel very oppressed right now. <laughs> I'm kind of joking, but anyway, that's kind of how I feel. So I don't know, like <clears throat> what do y'all think about me like going to a different platform? Like I love YouTube, but I don't know, maybe like my own website to talk about because like the Ghislaine Maxwell stuff, right? Like I'm not going to be able to cover that case on YouTube. Like eventually they're going to just demonetize my channel. So it's like, how do I, I, I think it's a really important case. How do I talk about it? You know what I mean? Anyway, I don't know. That's where I am mentally right now. But the reason that we're, you are all here. Um, also I made that video this morning if you want to watch it. Um, the reason you are all here is because Brittany Jean Spears has filed, has joined in with Jody Montgomery to file a, an objection to the language that Jamie Spears is using in the order to terminate the conservatorship. Now, a lot of people are like, oh my God, does that mean she's not free? They're using these stalling tactics, blah, blah, blah. No. Okay. Part of that is true. Yes, they are using stalling tactics, but it does not mean that Brittany is not free. Brittany is still free. She is free. What we are looking at right now is called a condition subsequent, which means there's some conditions that have to happen after. Most of the time you see that used in contracts, but here it's being used in a conservatorship. So it's like you buy a house and then there's conditions subsequent, like you have to get the, I don't know, like inspection done or whatever, right? It's like you still have to do it, but it's your house. Does that make sense? translated over to a conservatorship, the conservatorship is still ended. It is still, Brittany is still free. So that's the first big main question. Second big main question that people are asking is like, what is really going, like, is this Jamie trying to, you know, keep himself still as some type of authority or whatever? Basically, from what I can tell, Jamie is trying to um, prevent um, certain things from happening in the winding up of this Perhaps it has to do with him turning documents over. We're going to see what Matthew Rosengard has to say when we start to read through it. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to share the screen with y'all. Mm, which one is it? This one. Okay. So here we are. Okay. So here we are. Electronically filed by the um, Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles, on November 22nd, 2021 at 7.20 p.m. Okay. It was filed by, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a little hoarse. As you can see, Greenberg Traurig. Okay. So what is the title of this document? Oh, thank you so much, Phoenix. Brittany Spears objections to James P. Spears' proposed order following November 12th, 2021 hearing. Okay. So if you're brand new to my channel, Okay. If you've been here to my channel already, then you already know that whenever an order happens in a case, um, usually the person who writes the order is an attorney for the party who wants that particular thing to happen. So in this case, you had Jamie Spears petitioning to end the conservatorship on September 7th, 2021. So naturally, he or his lawyer, rather, would be in charge of drafting up the actual language of the court order to terminate the conservatorship. And I don't really know why that happens. I'm sure it has something to do with like administrative ease or whatever, put it kind of put the burden back on the lawyers to write it. But as we have seen now twice in this case, whenever we put the burden back on one of these team cons to write something or even Sam Ingham to do something, who is Team Con, in my opinion, opinion, allegedly for entertainment purposes only. When we do put the burden on them to do it, we have seen now two times in this case that they messed it up and they can't even do it right. So in this case, that's what we're going to be looking at. So 
Jody Montgomery, and I have already made a video about this, but Jody Montgomery has also filed objections to the proposed language in Jamie's order that he, you know, submitted. So this would be Brittany kind of joining in and also filing her own objections. Introduction. Brittany Jean Spears hereby respectfully objects to Jamie Spears inaccurate and procedurally improper. Oh, this is like the exact same language as Jody after we dragged her across the internet. Thank you, Tammy guy. Okay. So Brittany Spears hereby objects to Jamie's inaccurate and procedurally improper proposed order doing the following things, granting petition to terminate, denying petition to remove, and setting future hearing dates. Brittany also joins in the joint objections filed by Jody Montgomery and John Sabell on November 18th, 2021, which we already read in a previous video, which captures some of Ms. Spears' misconduct. Uh, sorry, Mr. Oh my God, please, Matthew, <laughs> please start using the people's first names. I'm begging you. I'm literally begging you, please, please start using their first names. Brittany also joins in the joint objections filed by Jody and John Zabel on November 18th, 2021, which captures some of Jamie's misconduct, including his improper ongoing efforts to bolster his reputation and rewrite history, including his November 17th, 2021 proposed order. So Matthew Rosengard is basically saying in this little silly little order he submitted to the court, he's trying to rewrite history and cover up his wrongdoing and includes his September 29th, 2021 suspension as conservator, a fact he cannot erase. Let's go to the footnote. Against this backdrop, Jamie's flawed proposed order requires correction. Matthew, why couldn't you just put this in the brief? We didn't have to come down to the footnote for this. Miss Spears, that's Brittany, also submits concurrently here with a correct and accurate proposed order reflecting the court rulings on November 12th. Okay, so whatever. We just have an exhibit back here, which is stuff we already know. Okay. Despite Jamie's effort and his proposed order, which makes no mention of his previously being actually removed, Jamie cannot avoid the stigma and consequences of his suspension, including but not limited to his obligation to produce documents concerning his conduct while serving as conservator, such as, <laughs> for example, communications concerning, among other things, his involvement relating to allegations from the recent New York Times expose regarding the iCloud mirroring of phones used by Britney Spears to contemporaneously capture communication between Britney and third parties, which according to New York Times reporting also included communications between Britney and her former lawyer, and allegedly placing a secret listening device in Britney Spears' home or bedroom. Okay, so... Matthew Rosengart just did a very long hit it for a geese in it. So I'm going to try to parse it out for y'all real quick. Okay. So what, <laughs> what Matthew Rosengart is saying is, listen, no matter how hard Jamie tries to try, he's not going to be able to avoid the stigma and the consequences of him being suspended. And one of those stigma and consequences just so happens to be, he has to turn over all of his communications relating to all kinds of sorts of things, including spying on his daughter. And then he cites the New York Times expose as his source. Objections. Okay, so here's what they were specifically objecting to in this objection. <laughs> I don't know, I just like, my brain just like totally zapped. Okay. Jamie's proposed order was filled. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Jamie's proposed order was filed in violation of the requirements of the California Rules of Court 3.1312. Jamie never had served it on Brittany, Mr. Zabel, or Jody before he filed it with the court. So basically, what happened was. Jamie, before he filed this thing with the court, was supposed to actually send the document to all those people, right? Brittany, John Zabel, and Jody Montgomery. 
But he did not do that. And the California Rules of Court 3.1312 actually require that. So he, he was supposed to have done that. But he did not. Brittany respectfully submits that this violation of the rules, right, standing alone requires that Jamie's proposed order must be rejected. So just in and of itself, even if I don't put nothing else, want two through eight or whatever, number one by itself is enough to just reject this whole thing entirely because he broke the rules of court. He was supposed to send it to all of us first and he did not do that. And so therefore, it should be rejected entirely. However, I'm going to give you reasons two through, et cetera, as to more reasons as to why it should be rejected and we need to correct it. Okay. Number two, with regard to the content of the proposed order for accuracy and completeness, page one, line eight should be clarified to provide that Jamie is the former and now suspended co-conservator due to his September 29th, 2021 suspension. Thank you, Mona. So just like Jody Montgomery and John Zabel, now Matthew and Brittany have joined in on that same objection that Jody did make. That objection is Jamie. Ref now, now you may be wondering, why don't I have this document pulled up and compare cross by side by side? It was filed under seal. So, because of the nature of the information in it, I guess, allegedly, apparently, we, the public, are not allowed to see it. So that's fine, whatever. So we can't see it, but just use your imagination. On page one, line eight, Jamie refers to himself as the conservator of the estate. Thank you, Shelley. Um, and what it should say instead Instead of conservator, it should say former and now suspended co-conservator due to his September 2020, uh, 29th, 2021 suspension. And so, okay, fine, whatever. I think this is, you know, silly, but listen, I haven't seen that document. So maybe it actually is really important because now we have like four different parties, like all signing onto this. Well, not really, truly, it's only like three, but we have Matthew Rosengart filing on behalf of Brittany. We have John Zabel, we have Jody Montgomery, and they're all saying... Please correct that so that it says former, co you know, and now suspended co-conservator due to his September 29th, 2021 suspension. Okay, fine. That's fine. Page three. Thank you, Lady BB. Page three. Sorry. Number three. <laughs> so page one, use your imagination. We're on page one. Just imagine what it might look like. Go down to lines 21 through 22. Something is labeled item number two. It says must be stricken as false and inaccurate. Contrary to Jamie's claim, the court made no finding that the facts as set forth in Jamie's petition are supposedly true and correct. Okay. All right. So let's pause right here. So it seems as though in Jamie's proposed order that he's written with the court that on page one, line 21, they have item number two. And Jamie has said, oh, the court found that the, there were some facts that were true and accurate, right? Matthew Rosengart is saying, no, 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 hold on. No, excuse me, no. The court found no such thing. So that just needs to be all crossed out. And honestly, this all could have been worked out between the parties had Jamie followed the correct court rules and sent it to Matthew Rosengart first. Then they could have gotten out, you know, the, the drafting errors and all of that stuff between the parties instead of wasting court time, expenses, and resources to have to put this in a filing. And now all of us, we the people, have to concern ourselves with it because Jamie didn't follow the rules. Okay, thank you, Nichelle. Oh, that's so nice. Welcome to the live. Okay, so... The next part of this sentence, nor could it have done so because Mr. Z <laughs> okay, let's start over. The court did not find, right? This is basically what Matt Rosengard is saying. The court did not find any facts that were true and accurate from his statement, nor could it possibly have possibly found that those facts were true and accurate because Jamie's pe petition was full of errors and lies. Jamie's attempt to slip this lie, lawyers hate using the word lie, except for me. 
I use the word lie all the time. And why would you say, what the hell is a falsehood? Oh, you committed a falsehood on me. Oh, come on. It's a lie. Call it what it is. I'm, I'm just saying like, this is not anything like, oh God, Matt Rosengart, you're canceled. Like all lawyers do this except basically me, to be honest. I actually don't know what all lawyers do. Maybe a lot of y'all say lies. Comment below if you're a lawyer and you just call people liars because that's what I feel like. You can, you can call somebody committing a falsehood, but you can't say they're lying. I just don't get it. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's because my brain is different. I don't know. Okay. The court did not find that these facts were true and correct, nor could it possibly have done so because Jamie's petition was full of lies. And his attempt to slip those lies into the court record is not surprising, but it is also inexcusable. Okay, great. I like that little. Not surprising, but it is inexcusable. I like how you said is in because you need to make it a negative. I like that. That's some good wordsmanship right there. Who did that? Number four. In addition, for the sake of accuracy. Okay, for the sake of accuracy. Okay, here we go. Y'all are about to get petty, I feel like. The order should reflect the court's finding that all parties agree that the conservatorship of the person and the estate of Brittany Jean Spears should be terminated. Okay, so Matt's like, listen, just for the sake of clarity, I also need you to add, everybody agrees this thing should be terminated. The date, number five, we're on number five. The date at page one, line 25, referencing a non-existent October 4th, 2021 hearing is incorrect and should be read as November 12th. 2021 okay the date. <laughs> okay just shade like they got a date wrong thank you nikki oh thank you so basically they just got a date wrong um the lawyers in jamie's case had put october 4th 2021 but really it was november 12th so they just got the date wrong number six page one use your imagination again we're on page one paragraph one should be rewritten oh my god now they're rewriting entire paragraphs if you're a lawyer or paralegal, you know how hilarious this is. Like, um, your whole paragraph should be rewritten, redraft. Okay, this is what they want. This is what Matt Rosengard and Brittany are proposing that th the whole first paragraph of Jamie's order be changed to. So they're just rewriting the order at this point. Paragraph one, uh, number 5013, the termination petition filed on September 7th, 2021 and joined in by the conservatee is granted. Granted, all caps. The conservatorship of the person and the estate of Brittany Jean Spears is hereby ordered terminated effective immediately subject only to further orders made herein. Okay. I don't know why they wanted to replace that. We don't know what that original paragraph says. Okay, number seven. For accuracy and clarity, a new paragraph should be added to the proposed order, clarifying that notwithstanding the termination of the conservatorship that was effective as of November 12th, 2021. See y'all, it was terminated. It's effective. She is out of the conservatorship. The temporary conservator of the estate, Mr. John Zabel, shall retain authority to complete the marshalling of all assets formerly under the control of Jamie as former conservator of the estate and to take actions in furtherance of the petition for substituted judgment filed by Mr. Isabel on November 12th, 2021, including to execute any and all estate planning documents pursuant to the petition for substituted judgment and to transfer any and all assets into the conservatorship to Brittany's designated recipient consistent with the terms of the petition. Okay. All right. That's, oh God, there's, these sentences are so long. Y'all got to get a little better at shortening these up a little bit. Okay. So what he's saying here is, a whole new paragraph should be added. Okay, so first of all, your whole first paragraph, just exit out. Bye. Add this as the new first paragraph, right? So we got our first paragraph here. Matthew wants this to be the first paragraph of the order. He wants this to be the, new, the second paragraph, right? So this is what he wants to put as that paragraph. And I think this in here, if you're asking me my opinion, why he wants this in here, he wants this part in here probably so that nobody can come and try and, you know, rewrite history in some way, shape or form and, you know, say that something happened in there that didn't happen. Maybe he just wants, I mean, he keeps saying for accuracy, for clarity, you know what I mean? Like look number, oh shoot, number four up here in addition to the sake of accuracy, right? And then down here again, accuracy and clarity. So what he wants included in here is like, 
the exact thing that happened in court. Now we're not going to go through all that again. I've already, you know, done it on my other live when, when I went through my co my court notes. So if you want to go watch that, you can go and do that. But he's just basically adding a second paragraph and saying like the order needs to actually say this stuff that actually happened at the hearing. Number eight, paragraph two on page two. So let's use our imaginations. Imagine page two. We're on the second paragraph. It is incomplete and misleading as written. Look, he's calling him a little under the under undercover. He's calling him a liar a little bit again. It should read. OK, again. So he's he, OK. So we're rewriting a whole nother paragraph. That's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's funny. So he wants this paragraph to be into the order. So let's see what he's saying. Based on the conservatorship having been terminated, again, the conservatorship is terminated. Maybe he's just trying to clarify, like, this thing is done. It is finished. It is done. The conservatorship is terminated. Do not try to get your little talons back in because you cannot. Thank you, Shelby. They want page two. Imagine May page two. Imagine paragraph two. We're down there. And they want to just take everything Jamie has, throw it in the garbage, and then they want to put this paragraph in there. Based on the conservatorship having been terminated and Jamie having already been suspended on September 29th, 2021, the petition to remove or suspend Jamie filed on July 26, 2021 is moot and denied without prejudice. Okay. So, okay, fine. All right. So what they're basically saying here is, look, we have a petition on the table to remove or suspend Jamie. And technically the, the court has never actually ruled on it. Like, yeah, let's remove or suspend him. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Hold on a second, give me a second. And I was already been suspended. Okay, I'm not 100% about this. I need to ask like Christopher C. Melcher. But what I think this is saying is, based on the conservatorship, being terminated and Jamie is already technically has been suspended. The petition to remove, I don't know if this is actually right. The other side might have a counter argument on this. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, they want to add this language in there. I'm not sure if that's correct, but listen, I mean, they know better than me, so I'm not really sure. Maybe I just don't understand it, but they want to add this paragraph in. Number nine, paragraph three on page two. So we're still on page two. Go right below where we just were. We're on paragraph three is incomplete and misleading as written. And it should read based on the concern. Oh, same sentence. Same, basically the same thing as above. But instead of the petition to do the conservator to suspend the conservator, instead it's like the appoint the successor conservator. I don't really know why Matthew Rosengard is doing this. So I can't really pontificate on why. Number 10, the proposed, but, but essentially what's happening is he's just saying, look, this paragraph needs to be added. <clears throat> the proposed order should also include the following information for accuracy and completeness. Okay. And this is the information it should include. The proposed order, oh, sorry, the petition for substituted judgment filed by John Zabel on November 12th, 2021 is set for hearing December 8th. 2012. Okay. So basically they're saying, look, that petition for substituted judgment, we should actually, um, put that, you know, date in the calendar on the order, like on the actual final order, just so for clarity and completeness. Number 11, paragraph six of Mr. Spears proposed order contains a typo. <laughs> <laughs> this is silly. This is silly. I mean, I get it. I get it. I understand why, but it's just like, okay. Yeah. But this is why they tell you in school and pay attention to details. I mean, I'm kind of of a pragmatist and I would be like, okay, you knew what he meant. But frankly, you don't. Like in 10 years, this could be 2020 or 2021. So I know why they did it. Okay, so basically what they're doing is Jamie said that it was filed, that Jody Montgomery had filed some type of motion in 20, like in the year 20201. And Rosengart saying, um, it should be 2021. Thanks. <laughs> For all these reasons, Brittany Jean Spears respectfully requests that this court reject Jamie's inaccurate and misleading proposed order, which was also submitted in violation of rule 3.1312. <laughs> Wait, uh, yeah, I agree. I don't know. I, I now that Matthew Rosengart and Brittany herself are submitting it, I feel much less suspicious about it. I was very suspicious about it. 
I was very suspicious about Jody's filing. But now that Matthew's doing it, like, okay, like, it seems a little toned down. Like, I don't exactly remember. I've read, like, so many things since then. But what do y'all think? Um, the general standard of proofreading in law. Rosengard is protecting Brittany by making these correction of facts. Oh, shoot. No, that's the one. Gina. Rosengard is protecting Brittany by making these correction of facts. I also think it's important if Brittany wants to move forward with further legal action for what was done to her. 100% agree, Gina. 100% agree. Um, it gives me per my last email vibes too. <laughs> A little bit low-key. Um... <laughs> the S before Rosengart's signature makes it look like he's being sarcastic. That's so funny. You're so right. So Danny Lynn is saying like, you know how when you're like on Twitter, or like the internet or whatever, like to indicate that someone's being sarcastic, they'll put like a slash and then S and then slash like, okay, nobody take this seriously. It's obviously like sarcasm because you know how it's hard to tell tone on the internet, especially for some of us. Um, this is basically looks exactly like that, except in like the business world or whatever, this is how you indicate that this is your signature. And usually the S would have like, I think two of those things. Maybe I'm like getting the internet confused with like the legal world, but I think that's what's going on. Cliff agrees. Yes, totally setting her up to take prior legal action or <laughs> further legal action. Y'all, I am clearly like words today. Can't win them all, you know. Squidwin, I agree. I hope she files something else with regard to the deposition and misappropriation as well. Rich liars don't follow the rules and that is how they get exposed. Exposed. I agree. Okay, wait, Suzanne. I don't see your comment above. Sorry. Brittany's, Sandra says, Brittany's legal team just wants Jamie's team to write an accurate account of why the conservatorship has ended and what steps are going to happen to close this properly. But Jamie's team has written it. True. Do y'all like my Christmas tree? Over there. Okay. Oh my gosh, woman for you just got notified. That's so annoying. Yeah, this little s. Um. Oh my gosh, what y'all aren't getting notified? I'm so upset. What do I do? I'm about to go on my own website or off platform on Patreon or something else because I want my stuff to be out there for free. That's my one issue with Patreon is like I want this stuff to be free. And it should be free. Like a lawyer reading court documents on the internet should be free. <laughs> like, But they're like suppressing me. Okay, so Charlotte, I do not know the answer to this, but maybe somebody in our community does. So Charlotte has a question. Let's say if you delete something from the cloud. I don't even know what the cloud really is. Like, is there just one cloud? Are there different clouds? Like a Google cloud and a Mac cloud? Like, is it one cloud? Let's say you delete something from the cloud. Is there a way to recover the deleted file? I'm curious about that when it comes to Jamie surveilling her that is a great question oh patreon 99 cents sounds like a possibility um i get the notifications for you in my phone but it definitely doesn't do that for all my subs youtube sure picks and chooses see and this is what i'm talking about it's annoying. but honestly it's kind of like also low-key my fault like i should just go live at the same times or days or whatever but i just can't like stuff happens when it happens i have to go live hmm Is there a program you can use to retrieve deleted info? I do not know. What about Judge Penny said the conservatorship was voluntary? Could that? Okay, yeah. So, and Judge Penny said the conservatorship is voluntary. 
Um, and I really don't think it really is. I mean, they keep saying that like it's like a make believe land. Like Brittany did not know that she could terminate the conservatorship, so I don't think it was voluntary. Okay. Apparently there is a program you can use to retrieve deleted info. Oh my god, this is so annoying, Kylie. Ugh. No, I have to start thinking outside the box about how to make sure y'all can get the lives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Apollo. The cloud, for those who don't know, like me, <laughs> just means storage provided by a company. Different companies have different policies. Apollo does not know Apple's, but Google's is. They hold it for six months and they delete if you are inactive. Oh, oh man. Okay. Thanks for telling me that. There is a way to retrieve deleted stuff because when you delete something, it doesn't actually delete the data, just the memory pointer for it and makes the space available to be rewritten. Wow. That makes kind of does make sense. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Jacob. Yeah, very important bit, LB. Yes, Miss Gabby, I think that's what's happening to me. And that's why it's like, I'm feeling very censored. <laughs> oh, good. Thank God. At least it's working for Sandra. Thank God. Could I do a video on Peter Max's guardianship? Rosengart has gotten involved in the case. Yeah. Um... See, the thing is, I like do court document things. So are court documents available somewhere? Um, otherwise, I, I don't know how I would really get into the case. Do y'all have info on it? I have the ASMR voice because I am so hoarse today because I've been blabbing all day. Yeah, this is the problem, right? What are you going to do? Oh, you've been chatting with Libra. Okay, Apollo, do you have the court documents? Does Libra have them? Are they on a... Send me a link so I can get them. I would love to go over the case. I would love to go over the publicly available court documents. I don't want any documents that are that I'm not supposed to like read out loud. Just... If you've been chatting with her, that'd be cool if I could get the documents that are, that are okay to be like available to the public and all that. Love you too, Matilda. That is such a good name. Don't think the sea ship was voluntary, but I wonder if it can have consequences if it is ruled by the judge to have been so. Good point, Marin. Like, are they going to have to, right, like, are they going to have to come back and challenge whether it was voluntary? Hmm. I don't know. The answer is I don't know, but that's a great question. Oh, Sloan has entered the chat. <laughs> Where did I get the pink Christmas tree? Well, you should definitely go watch my vlog on Christmas tree shopping because it is so funny and I tell a story about when I was little, but that Christmas tree is from at home, not sponsored. I bought it with my own money. Um, I just, oh, I don't know. I didn't, who, which post, who deleted what? I might've lost it. Peter Max's daughter is advocating for him. Maybe you can ask her. I'm sure she'd like more attention to his case. Yeah. I think Apollo hopefully is going to see if there's like publicly available documents we can go over. Oh, Crystal, you're so nice. Okay. If you could reach out to her on Instagram, I know she would be grateful. Okay, cool. Sure. Okay, cool. Yes, I know. Nichelle Nichols, also in a conservatorship, also seems to be fraudulent, also seems to be a racket. Lou has never responded back to me, ever, Thea. I know, it's a funny video, and y'all do not, it's getting no love, and it's hilarious. It will give you at least one dopamine. At least one dopamine you will get. Fiasco at the at home, not sponsored. <laughs> December 8th, 2012. It's supposed to be 2021. Yeah. Joaquin, you're right. Oh, 
Oh, she had deleted the Jeffree Star post. Y'all were so mean to her. Y'all know that girl has not even really had no access to the internet, and then y'all were jumping on her, making fun of her about some stupid setting spray that she didn't even pay for. Y'all are some kind of mean. Y'all are really mean. Y'all are some mean-hearted people. God damn. She's trying to be a little nicer. Shit. People have been telling her what to do for her whole life. Like, it's just some setting spray. Like, everybody knows Jeffree Star's canceled, y'all. It's like some big secret. Like, I get it. I do get it. It's not that I don't get it. But, like, golly. Like, pick your battle. You know, like, we got to start picking our battles. In my opinion, this is my opinion. This is my opinion, allegedly. Hmm. Free Nichelle Nichols, for sure. I completely agree. Yeah, y'all, like, treat, you know, you know, remember the golden rule? Treat other people how you would maybe want to be treated yourself. That's how I'm feeling. Like, maybe y'all should treat Brittany. Um, maybe a first day intern wrote Jamie's. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. People, yeah, y'all should have been out the loop for years. And then the other thing, too, with the Christina Aguilera stuff, we do not know. They have known each other since they were very little girls, like Mickey Mouse Club level age, since the 90s. There's probably so many decades of history between those two women. We are never going to know. So all this Stan War stuff is just ridiculous. She is a real-life human being that you, who actually knows Christina Aguilera personally for decades. Like, people out here thinking that they know more than her. Like, maybe she doesn't know. Like, I'm pretty sure she knows the person she's been knowing for decades. Like, y'all got to have a little more compassion. Just let the girl say what she's going to say. It doesn't matter. All this stand warring is just adding fuel to the fire. Just let her get it out what she wants to say. She's been censored and silenced for so long. Just let her get it out. Just let her get it out. That's her friend who she actually knows. Well, okay. That's her acquaintance. I don't know if they're friends. Bumble does not censor. What is Bumble? I thought that was a date nap. Brittany's allowed to have her own feelings that are different and separate and apart from y'all's too. You ever thought of it? People can change. That's true. That is true. We do not know how these people are in real life. Who are we to tell Brittany who she can talk about on the internet? Calm down. Y'all love controlling people. And y'all know, the people I'm talking to, y'all, you know if you're one of the y'alls I'm talking to right now. Brittany is so behind on understanding social media the way the rest of us are. Exactly. Like, it's literally like, imagine like not having access to anything since 2008. And then you like basically like, it's literally like interdimensional traveling. Like she has traveled to and landed in a new dimension. And there's like new rules here that weren't in place in 2008. And there's rules that in 2008 that were in place that are not in place now, right? Like there's a lot she's travel. she's time traveled like literally she's a time traveler like think of it as that y'all are some kind of harsh like she doesn't know all these hashtag woke woke rules of the internet and honestly some of them don't even make any sense anyway so maybe she's never gonna follow them anyway yeah exactly i completely agree it's like a sister you get in a fight and stuff from 20 years ago comes up blows stuff out of proportion free speech britney exactly free speech got it like y'all just gotta See, Claire, that's another issue. It's like, I want to talk about this Turpin family, but it's, you know what, A-B-U-S-E. And if I say that on this channel, they keep suppressing me. So what do I do? Ugh, I'm annoyed. <laughs> I have to freaking OnlyFans to read court documents. It's really, it's really absurd how suppressed our speech is these days. And I'm not even just talking about like AdSense, which is annoying. Like I quit my job to do YouTube. So like, it would be nice for the ads to like pay me for my work. But like that totally aside, it suppresses the actual channel. Like if Google can't make money on it as much as, you know, the next video, then they will not boost it. And it's like, I'm doing all this work and reading all these important cases just to get suppressed. And I feel like it's censorship. I don't like it. I do listen. I do understand on one side, like how this happened. I'm not like completely clueless. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Um, happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Indigenous People Day. If that's what you're choosing to celebrate. Happy, happy, all of that. 
Happy Celebrate Eating with Your Loved Ones Day in the U.S. Um, such a happy birthday. I'm so sorry. Wait, I missed it. Yeah, y'all are, yeah, the media is horrible. And some of her fans are even just as bad. Like, it is crazy how fast after conservatorship ended the media and some of her fans and stands are trying to tell her what to do. Trashing her is so sad. It is so sad. Like, ugh, y'all only wanted her free if she was going to do exactly what you wanted and think like you and talk like you and post like you. Can't relate. Yeah, exactly. I'm sick of everyone coming down on her for acting like a child. No other adult on earth acts like a child, especially ones who've been controlled for a decade. I mean, look, I have a freaking unicorn pinata. Look at my room. I act like a child. Nobody's freaking, actually, I was going to say nobody's bothering me, but that is not true because people will literally bother me all the time. Um, details. Wait, hold on. Wait, I lost it. <laughs> Who said I messaged you details? Oh, here it is. I messaged you details for Peter Max on Twitter. Perfect. I will go check it out. Thank you, Apollo. <laughs> I agree, Crow Red Eye. A resounding chorus from everyone should be leave Britney alone. <laughs> Literally. Cult 13 years of brainwashing. Exactly. Exactly. The media needs to not cling to every single thing that Britney says right now. She has been silenced. If she said something to say about Christina, so be it. If she wants to see, yeah, exactly. If she has something to say about Christina, so be it. I agree. That's my opinion. Hmm. I know. He just wants to brighten her day. You're welcome to do my best to advocate for Peter. Your help would be godsend. Yes. Many were dissecting Britney's Instagram for years, looking for clues and speaking out about her. And now people are nitpicking her actual posts. That is a good point, Laura. Everyone needs to just back off. Leave Britney alone. Let's say it together. One, two, three. Leave Britney alone. Leave Britney alone. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Leave BJ alone. Send the trolls my way. Happy to deal with that. <laughs> I haven't gotten any like that bad lately because I've been like not really on Twitter. Yeah, a lot of y'all. Yeah, I mean, a lot of fans, Damon, like just wanted her to be free and thought she would start performing again. No, some of them just wanted her to start exactly performing again. Some of them just wanted her to just start performing again the second the sea ship was over. It's true. Yeah, exactly, Heather. And another thing, too, is, like, we get so caught up in this, like, hive mind thing. We get so caught up in this hive mind thing that people, like, actually stop using their common sense. And I know that's said, like, a lot, but, like, really, truly think about it. Like, common sense is, like, what's really hurting for Britney to be happy about this stupid setting spray? Like, what's it really hurting? Like, People like completely trashed her for nothing. Like use your common sense. Like who was the victim there? Who was the victim you were protecting? Like, yes, Jeffree Star has been a racist, but like think of the full context. Like that's the hill you want to die on. It's just weird. Like some of y'all just. <laughs> yeah, this is Brittany's world. We're just living in it. Thank you, Mandy. Exactly. <laughs> I just really want everybody. I want, I want every, I would like the same respect. I want to give it to all y'all who are watching. We should all be able to just live our lives, do what we want to do, what brings us happiness and joy and what resonates with us, the life that's most true to us. And that's going to literally look different for all 7.2 or whatever billion of us. It's just going to look different and that's fine. I am so happy that you are over there living your life happily in the way that you want to live it. I want you to feel that way about me and I want us all collectively to feel that way about Britney Spears I don't know that's just what I want not that that matters yeah the four 
adult Turpin children have not had access to the donated funds they got by way of the California probate court. Their public guardian was just fired, probably because of 2020's investigation. I would love to cover that case. But am I going to be suppressed more? I'm just in a mood today. I'll get over the suppression. I'm just like, this is my date event about it, okay? <laughs> All right. Everyone just thank Everyone give a shout out to Simply Monka because she is absolutely amazing mod. No, you are, Thea, you are not the only one freaked out that Michael Caine owns all of Britney's companies and that the translation happened two days before the sea ship was terminated. I don't know if he owns it. I need to look into that. I just haven't. Rebecca, this is a unicorn on my table. I also have put on the unicorn, a sleeping mask that is shaped like a unicorn. So it's like a unicorn, unicorn inception moment action. But it is a pinata and I got it from... The little girl party section at Walmart for like $7. Maybe it was 12 I don't really remember. I got it like probably a month ago. Um, yes, Laura, good point. It is up to us to calm the BS that they will try to stir and read between the lines. The Jeffrey thing is innocent. Christina and Brittany's issue, Brittany felt that and spoke on it validate her good intuition i agree laura i agree 100 percent, 100 percent. cosign miss gabby i think you're right like so miss gabby glitter said i don't agree with the idea that people were attacking britney i think people don't know how to act when they see jeffrey star's name i think no one would really ever blame britney and that's true i do think that a lot of the people who were like commenting and saying things they weren't like really meaning to attack Britney but the way they were talking to her was very condescending and rude like oh no Britney what we're not gonna do today with like a bunch of like sirens and like sign like it just some of the comment not all of them some of them were super sweet like super sweet but some of them were just more controlling bullcrap right it was just more don't do that why would you stand that blah blah do more research like shut up the woman is literally coming out of 13 years of enslavement and you're talking about setting spray. Like, really, read the room. Not you. I'm not you, right? I'm just saying, like, some of the comments I saw were, like, particularly controlling and demanding. And I'm like, the way they were written was just rude. But I agree. It probably wasn't coming necessarily from a place of malice. But that's that's something we can all learn, right, and think on is, like, how did it probably feel to Brittany to be bombarded with that whenever she was finally getting a chance to play with makeup, play with setting spray, pretty packaging, whatever, for the first time and maybe ever? Um, you know, we could all learn that from that, myself included. I, I do think it's true, Laura, that a lot of them were, but I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones that were being rude. Some of saw def yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was like mm. the rude ones are probably not Britney fans. Exactly. And that's why it's like just in case those rude ones are here over here on my channel, I'm telling them that was rude. <laughs> Listen, tell it like it is, Colin. Tell it. Um no, it wasn't makeup. Um, yes, see, jam. It was Brittany had received in, as a PR package um, some some makeup, I'm sure, but in particular, some site type of, type of spray for your face. I'm assuming it was a, t a setting spray. It might have been something else. It was a spray, a facial spray called Holy Something. And Brittany basically like did a PR Instagram post. I don't know if she was paid for it. I think she probably, I don't really know. I don't think she was. I'm not, I haven't seen anybody allege she was. But it was like, she was like standing this like setting spray or whatever. And people like unanimously <laughs> told her like, some were very nice. Like, Brittany, oh, I don't think you know about this guy. And then some were like, I just described. But that's what it was. Let Brittany choose what she says. That's it. That's it. That's all it is. It's like, if you're coming from a place of informing someone, that's totally fine. But I don't think it's fine to try and demand that she do something just because it's not what you would do. You know what I mean? I don't know if her dad got rid of her condo. Um, 
<laughs> Read the room. Exactly. Yes, me too, um, Maren. I was not a Britney fan like that, like a super fan or anything like that. I was like, you know, if you would have asked me about her, I would have been like, oh, yeah, Britney, I like her or whatever. But I didn't know her like songs really except the ones that were like popular on the radio or whatever. But I'm definitely a free Britney fan. Oh, thank you. All right, y'all. Well, I'm like really hoarse. I'm having a lot of fun. I always like get a little dopamine whenever I'm hanging out with y'all. But I think I'm going to call it a night. Hopefully nothing happens urgently. Um, I'm going to put give some thought to where I want to cover some of the more like controversial types of cases so that I can go where can I, I can be for sure it's like 18 plus and we can really talk about some of these heavier issues that are coming up in the Maxwell case, maybe the Turpin case. Um, I really want this information to be available to the public. I'm going to put some thought into it, but if y'all know any, you know, other creators who are doing stuff that makes sense to y'all and, and is very accessible, um, let me know about it. And yeah, I'll, I'll see y'all soon. Facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay, bye.